Hey everyone, I'm Pete Licata, and I'm going to introduce you to the W60. And in this video, I'm going to be focused on the flat bottom reusable brewing chamber. Um, I find that this type of brew actually makes a very tasty coffee. Um, if you compare it to something like a French press, uh, because we get a little bit of that sediment that comes through the filter, uh, you end up with a little bit of that, but it's very, very clean in comparison to your standard uh, press pot uh, where you get a lot of silt, you get a lot of oils, um, you get a lot of those types of things. In the case of the W60 flat bottom mesh brewer, um, you get a lot of the benefit of the oils in the coffee without so much of the sediment. Um, and so I find that it makes a very tasty brew, surprisingly for myself when we started testing this out. Um, and so I think that you'll actually really like it. And this one, I'll show you how to use it uh, and what you should, maybe you shouldn't do with this coffee and give you a sample uh, brew recipe with that as well. So first of all, uh, the recipe that I'm going to be using is a 24 gram dose with a 396 gram water uh, weight. The brewing ratio being 1 to 16.5 is uh, usually due for most pour overs personally. The water temperature that I'm using is 95 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the grind size is very similar to what I would use for a V60 with a paper filter. Um, I tend to go slightly, just the tiniest, tiniest bit finer than I would use for a V60. Uh, but it really depends on the coffee. In the case of this coffee, it was actually the same grind that I would normally use for my standard V60 or W60 uh, brew with a paper filter. So start by placing our dose in there and you actually can shake this uh, brewing chamber very easily, get a nice flat surface for the water to hit. Uh, the point being that we're going to get a nice even uh, extraction of the coffee uh, when the water is hitting it, as opposed to having the cone-shaped uh, stack of coffee grinds in there. Uh, now I'm adding 50 grams of water for my balloon, and just over two to one, or two parts of water for the one part of coffee uh, that I had for my dose. Find this to be appropriate. Let it bloom for the standard 30 seconds. Make sure all those grinds are fully saturated. Now, when we come back to start pouring our water, uh, there's a couple of different techniques I'm gonna cover here. Uh, the first one is a continuous pour. Uh, in this case, start in the very center of the, of the brewer, and we're going to use uh, concentric circles to circle out, uh, leaving about one centimeter of space around the exterior. Uh, and the purpose for that is because we want to continually be moving the water flow around, so we're not getting a uh, a deep divot of water digging into those coffee grinds, but I also don't want to uh, rinse the exterior of the filter. With a reusable filter like this, uh, I actually don't want to rinse that because it's going to create a massive bypass of water. So you want to keep a nice amount of your coffee fines uh, on the exterior. Now you'll see me using a, a, cr a crosshatch sort of technique where I'm going side to side and switching directions as well. For a continuous pour, this ensures that I'm getting uh, even distribution of the water and the coffee grinds together in order to make a nice even brew. I use circular pours followed by the zigzag cross hashing pour, then back to a circular pour until I finish pouring the entirety of my water. And then we're just going to let it drain through. Uh, my typical target time for brewing with the reusable flat bottom filter is about three to three and a half minutes. Uh, this is definitely a little bit longer than your standard paper filter, uh, but it ends up with some excellent results. Now for an alternative way of brewing with this uh, flat bottom brewer, uh, I do find it to be very useful to do a segmented pour, uh, meaning that we're going to break up our pours into pulses. So starting with the same 50 gram bloom for our 24 gram dose, we're going to let that coffee bloom. Then I'm going to break it into 100 gram pours. After, after my bloom has finished at 30 seconds, I start my first pour and pour in 100 grams. So I have a total of 150 grams in the, in the brewer at this point. And then I'm going to wait about 15 seconds for the water to start draining through and give a little bit more space for the next pulse of water. 
After that 15 seconds is up, I'm going to add another 100 grams of water. I'm going to continue this one more time until I have a total of 350 grams of water in my brewer. After I've gotten to my last pour, I'm going to just top up that last 50 grams with a quick pour to make sure that I've gotten enough water in there for my full brew ratio. The same rules apply. I don't want to wash the exterior of the filter. I want to make sure that I'm getting a nice, even saturation of those coffee grinds. So what does this yield? It yields a full-bodied type of coffee. You get a lot of those solids. You get a lot of those oils that are coming from the coffee. Um, you get a little bit of sediment. Uh, and it's actually quite, quite small particles. Um, it is noticeable if you are looking for it. Uh, however, it is definitely less sediment and less uh, kind of chunky than, say, a French press might be. I do like this brewing method because it is much more sustainable. You end up without the paper waste of using uh, disposable papers. Um, so if that's a concern to you, the flat bottom mesh brewer with the W60 is a great option uh, because you can then just simply dump those grinds out, give it a rinse, and it's ready to go again. This is a, a great new product that adds to Hario's range, uh, and I think that you'll get some really great results. Thanks for joining.